Hey, I'm Andy from Outclear. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to figure out what's the right in-ear monitor for you. How to look at all the marketing jargon, all the words that us marketers use to describe a sound, and how to distill that down into figuring out how to pick the right monitor for you. So stay with us, we're gonna jump right in. Let's go into a little backstory or a little history. You know, in the 70s and 80s, you've seen movies where people are just like listening to headphones with, through the record player and they're just kind of zoning out. Usually it's like the 70s or 80s. Um, people used to listen to music and just get immersed in it, but listen to it um, pretty flat. They wanted to know exactly what the musician wanted to hear. They wanted to hear what the musician wanted them to hear. They wanted to hear what the engineer wanted them to hear. There's a just a little bit more immersive flatness in the style of headphones that were being made. In the 2000s, that kind of changed. And it's kind of chicken and egg, but one of the big, thing that, big things that changed is Beats. Like Beats by Dre came out. And now all of a sudden people are listening to music and they're just like, oh, I've never heard anything like this. Now, contoured or, or monitors that have a different shape to them have been around for, for ages. It's not like Beats is the first one to do it, but they were the first ones certainly to make it popular, to really go into that, that mass, critical mass, and make everyone kind of wake up to realize there could be something more out there. Now, another thing that changed is just our preferences. So we moved from having music that was relatively even energy wise across the spectrum to music that's much more low endy hip hop edm techno dance music uh pop music even our rock our modern rock music has lots of low end to it and it might be because of clubs you know live music we just really like to feel that 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 emotion that comes with something that isn't just even it's it's bass heavy you know, um, so that changed and it changed how we listen to music. In fact, you could go into a car, hit the tone or the EQ button, and you'll see that things, you boost the low end and you boost the upper end because that's how we like to listen to music. When we design an in-ear monitor, we have lots of different drivers to select from. And driver is just another way of saying speaker. So we could have a speaker that's larger, a speaker that's smaller. We could have a, a moving coil, which is like the circle that we're all used to seeing. That's kind of the more common. But then a balanced armature is what most in-ear monitors are made from because the speakers are very tiny. You could go to a, a electrostatic or a planar or new technologies are always coming out kinetic, you know, where you're just getting that bone conduction. There's lots of options that we have as a designer, but beyond that, within each type, there's different sizes. So it could be a big moving coil. It could be a small moving coil. It could be a woofer designed a balanced armature. It could be a tweeter. So we get to put all of those together to aim for a certain sound signature or certain sound. Now there's two ways that we can design or two methods that we can employ when designing a monitor. One is we design it to be wide or the width. So that's where you take the drivers and they're kind of chunked up to operate on each. Each operates on its own little part of the spectrum, the sound spectrum. That means each one is only working on a little part. It means they're more efficient because they're not working on the whole thing, but just little parts. And we can now move each of those little chunks up or down to make something that's got a certain sound quality to it. The other thing we can do is design it to be deep. And that's where we stack drivers on top of each other so that multiple drivers work on that same little chunk. So let's say you've got modern music is 80% low end energy. Let's say we take four drivers and we stack them on the low end. Now that 80% energy goes through four of those speakers. Each one is only working on 25%. That makes it very efficient and it gives you lots of headroom. Headroom is a fancy word for saying the amount of sound before it distorts. So when there's a lot of headroom, a bass player or a drummer with all that low end, it's not going to distort if you have high headroom and it'll let you hear yourself very clearly. When we design a monitor, we're designing it then to sound a certain way or to have a certain target that we're aiming for. So let's start with flat. A flat monitor is exactly what it sounds like. It's flat. Other words you might see is, um, you might see accurate, you might see clear, balanced, transparent, uncolored. Those are all words that are used to describe something that's flat. Now, there's no true flat. There's no perfect flat. Um, 
there's so many different manufacturers of in-ear monitors and they all have monitors that are aiming to be flat and they still, none of them sound the same. So it's more about what our goal is or what we're aiming for than it is any achievement of flat perfection, if you will. But a flat monitor is going to not color the source material at all. So people like studio engineers, or if you're mixing front of house, or you have really wide acoustic instruments, flat is kind of where you're aiming for because you don't want it to be colored. You don't want the speakers to change the speakers itself or the inners themselves to change the sound. You want it to be as close to the source material as is possible. The other thing we can design for is contour. Contour is like it sounds, it actually has a shape to it. And we can design lots of different shapes. We can have a low end boost and an upper end boost. That's typically what you might call a V or a U shaped contour. You can have a low end boost and then everything ramps down from there. You could have a mid boost. That would be helpful in things like broadcast where you're just listening for your own voice. That's the main thing that you're trying to hear. Some words you might see to describe a contoured monitor. It's gonna be contoured, energetic, dynamic, colored. You might see EQ words like boost or scooped. You know, when you see an EQ word, that tends to mean there's a EQ equalization applied to it and it's gonna be contoured. So how do you know which monitor is right for you? Flat or contoured? Well, like we mentioned earlier, if you're a studio, front of house, monitor engineer, you want it to be as flat as possible. You do not want to color that source material. If you're a keyboardist or an acoustic guitar player, those are very wide instruments. So you want it flat as well so that your low end is not competing with your upper end or you don't have frequencies that jump out over one, one over the other. If you're a guitar player, you might want a little bit of a scoop in that mid. You want a little low end for the energy a little bit of upper end for the articulation to really hear the notes. If you're a vocalist, uh, upper end boost where your where your vocals live. That's going to let your mute your voice kind of hover over the mix a little bit. You might want to add a little bit of low end also just for that groove feel, that dynamic feel that comes with a, a contour monitor. If you're a bass player or a drummer, low end. You need lots of low end, so definitely contoured. But if especially looking for something with a network of drivers on the low end, so you have plenty of headroom. You're not distorting at all, depending on you know how loud you're playing, how much bass you have in the mix. It won't distort when you've got a nice network of low-end drivers. So headroom is kind of what you're looking for in a contoured monitor. So there are three questions you can ask to help narrow down what's the right inner monitor for you. The first is, what are you going to use it for? So that's pretty easy. It's, I'm a bass player, I'm playing on stage. I am a vocalist, I play, you know, or I sing twice a month. You figure out what exactly you need it for. The second thing is going to be your preference. Do you like that energetic feel, that dynamic feel, that scooped feel, or do you like something very accurate? So your preference. The third is your budget. How much can you spend? You know, these things can be expensive, especially a custom in your monitor because we're making them custom for you. All right, so you've got those three things. So let's, let's use an example. Let's say you're a vocalist, right? So that's what you're using it for. And you like a low end. You like that kind of feel, that groove, and you're going to spend less than $400. So that's going to be the Dual XB. Decision is kind of made for you, right? Dual XB. Or if you like it more even, you like to hear the whole band a little bit more even, that's going to be the Versa. So let's say you're a guitar player. You play, let's say, week in, week out, or you're playing every night, and your budget is under $1,000. Then you and you like that feel, that kind of tube amp feel. That's going to be the Spire all day long. But let's say you like to hear the rest of the band. You know, you want you're an MD maybe, and you want to hear everybody. Then you're going to go with the Studio Four. So those three things: what your preference is, what it's designed for, what you need it for, and what your budget is. That's what's going to determine what's the right monitor for you. I hope you found this helpful. We're going to do lots of other videos. We're going to be talking about. Uh, monitor A versus monitor B. We're gonna talk about drivers, like why one six driver sounds different than another six driver, um, and why maybe you shouldn't compare the number of drivers when looking for an earphone. We're gonna talk about headroom, all these things in our driver's education series. We're gonna to continue to talk about them. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, make sure that you're getting our updates. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. If you have any questions about this, hit us up on social media, in the comments, you can email us. We're really responsive. Um, if we don't respond, it's probably because we didn't hear you or it's a weekend. 
Um, and I apologize in advance if, if we miss something, just hit us up again. We'd love to serve you. We'd love to help you out. We've got lots of resources on our website, outclair.com, that'll help you narrow down what exactly you need for uh, what you're playing and what your instrument is. So again, we are open. We'd love to help you out. We are excited about this year. The Outclair family is growing and we've got a lot of exciting things coming up. So make sure you stay tuned. We've got lots more coming up for you.